good evening, jammers, and welcome to the Jams and Cocktails radio program. Gonna roll my R's there just a little bit. I, you know, for a romantic episode, I am your host, Brad Brock. And tonight, yes, love is in the air. It's Valentine's Day across this big blue planet. Uh, so tonight, I'll give you a little history on how this Hallmark holiday has evolved over the centuries. And we'll have some uh, themed segments throughout the show, including a round of Name That Tune, Entertainment News in the Geordie Files, Ellie's Bad Bitch Bible Study, and, of course, Brad's Final Thought. Now, joining me here in the lounge tonight is the Bad Bitch, Miss Ellie Brock. <laughs> what do you got there, Ellie? Chocolate. Yes. It's good to have good to have chocolates. Good to have chocolates on Valentine's Day. Uh, so listen, can you guys keep a secret? Uh, the cast is sparse tonight because um, we actually recorded this show earlier today so that I could surprise Jordy with a Valentine's Day uh, date at the fair. So that's a circus, isn't it? Kind of all the same. Uh, so all day she thought that she was going to spend Valentine's Day uh, behind a microphone, which, by the way, uh, she was totally happy to do, hanging out with all of us and all of you out there. Uh, but she deserves nice things and surprises. So uh, uh, I'm likely currently trying to uh, and failing to win a teddy bear as we sit here. <laughs> but I thank all of you so much for tuning in live with us tonight uh, on YouTube, Facebook, and listening in on Shore Life Radio. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel if uh if you care to, we would love for you to do that. We're so close. We had a really nice push after Arts Fest. Uh, we had about 15 or 16 new subscribers from that, which is, you know, a little bit goes a long way for me. Yeah. So uh, we're very, we're getting ever closer to our coveted 500. Uh, so yeah, so subscribe there. And uh, you can also follow us on our various social medias, like uh, Facebook, Instagram, MySpace, <laughs> some other ones um, some other defunct social media platforms we're on those too uh, we're also going to give you a little recap on Arts Fest over the weekend right after our shot of the week let's do it <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. We're going to celebrate with a Valentine's Day theme shot of the week, the chocolate covered cherry. Now this is a layered shot, so we're going to start with about a half an ounce of grenadine for our cherry. Then we're going to layer in our coffee liqueur. We're using Camora. We use the back of a spoon to kind of layer that on top. Then using the same technique, we'll Top it off, layer of Baileys. And here you have it, the chocolate covered cherry shot. Happy Valentine's Day. Oh yeah. yeah there you go. <laughs> here we are, it, it, it stayed pretty well layered here, yeah. Ellie. Not bad, not bad. Did you see my masterful layering? Yeah. Yeah, very quick. Do you also see my in insanely shaky hands? <laughs> I should probably go and get that checked out. <laughs> like, that should probably be a thing. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks for, for being here with me, Ellie. Of course. And uh, thanks to all of you tuning in. Happy Valentine's Day to you out there. Salud. I think it, I think it tastes just like a chocolate covered yeah, cherry. Yeah, that's really good. Delicious. Delicious, delicious. Well, you guys, you can join us each week for our Shot or Cocktail of the Week by visiting us at jncnlive.tv to see what we're planning. I think I'm going to start running some sort of photo contest um, where viewers that hashtag a photo of them with our Shot of the Week or Cocktail of the Week, we'll put them in the running for some swag or something like that. I don't know. I'll get it figured out. 
but uh, me and Al Beltran have been working on different contests and ways to do contests for our various podcast endeavors. So uh, we want to get more stuff to all of you. We want to get you guys some stuff. So speaking of stuff, we gave away a lot of stuff. So much. Um, all of it. So Arts Fest happened over the weekend. Um, completely exhausting, but really, really a lot of fun. Um, it was pretty dope that they gave us a tent this year. Yeah. Uh, so we had a place to set up all our stuff. Day one, we had a prize wheel and it was pandemonium. Yeah. It was complete chaos. <laughs> um, we, we had, you know, tons of cool tumbler cups. We had a bunch of branded sunglasses, uh, all kinds of stuff. A million lays. Thank God. Yeah. Um, stickers, you name it. Koozies. We didn't have a whole lot of, but literally almost everything is gone. Uh, we had hot sauces too. Gone. We, we had one bottle left. And um, yeah, it was it was pretty successful. But the second day, we we're like, well, we don't have anything to give away, <laughs> so I think we're just gonna we're just, we'll bring out all the lays. And there was a big Jimmy Buffett tribute on the at the end of the second day, so uh, we it got rid of out. it. Really did it? Really did work out. It was not not too shabby. But um, oh man, uh, Saturday was awesome because all the the whole music lineup was like a JNC family reunion. Oh yeah. So, like, I kicked off the show at, like, 10, 15, ungodly <laughs> out. And when I tell you guys it was dead quiet before I started, the, you could have heard a pin drop in the park. And I come out, bam, just, <laughs> I could just see old people hitting the ground uh, in the distance. It was unbelievable. But got the party started. Um, and then we had the little things. Uh, Shanice and Katie and uh, Ryan mm -hmm. uh, was playing guitar with them and uh, they were awesome. Um, they played after that and we had the Kevin McLaughlin band. It was cool. He had his merch tent set up right next to ours. So uh, we had cool neighbors. <laughs> um, and then uh, Mike Ferro ended out day one uh, on the main stage and it was just, you know, all good friends and guests. Mike Ferro actually our keg sponsor for next month. Wink, wink. Um, so really a, a cool experience to be hanging out at a festival with all of our friends. Um, and then Sunday came along Sunday, you know, I think we were a little bit more complacent. We were settled. Um, I, I drank more. <laughs> we, yeah, we, we, all, we drank all drank more. more. And, um, and I definitely got one of those euros. I saw everybody oh, was eating them on so Saturday good. and I was like, I'm going to have one. Yeah. Um, so, that yeah, was the way to go. It's so good. Uh, the entertainment was great. Uh, the, the show kicked off with a much lighter, uh, probably how it should have been on Saturday, but uh, it was a class of the Treasure Coast Classical Guitar Society. They were great. And they, they had so many people sitting up there listening. It was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome. So that was a great start. Um, then we had Raquel Renner and Roger Carr took the stage after them. Uh, and, and they're just great. You know, she's uh, a you know, Nashville recording artist and just you know, uh, she's great. And I've known Roger for a million years. So um, they took the stage. There was a poetry slam. And I don't know if you guys know about poetry slams, um, but it, and it, it, I don't know if you know about Arts Fest, but Arts Fest, you know, it, there's a certain, very family friendly. Yeah, lots of kids. Certain demographic. Yeah. Um, poetry slams are inherently intense and um, and sometimes venomous. Um, an eye opening and inspiring. Yeah, they're not politically correct. So I'm not. I wasn't sure that they knew what they were getting into, but the truth was they did. You know, and 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 the the lady in charge she explained to me she's like you know it's a part of the arts, and it's the future of the arts. So like we need them to be involved so that arts fest can perpetuate for years to come. Um, and I was like awesome, and then she was like. I did give them a heads up to kind of try to keep it PG. And like, so I went over to listen and uh, like just straight out of the gate, a great big F bomb. <laughs> and I was like, awesome. This is going to be great. What's the, the worst part about all of it was I just watched all of these amazing poets pour their hearts out into this microphone. And then I had to get up and being judged, by the way, being judged by their peers. And then I had to get up 
and uh, make announcements about sponsors. And I, I've never been more nervous on a microphone, Ellie, <laughs> than I was after literally like being brought to tears by these poets on this microphone. And then I'm like, oh, make sure you stop by our sponsor tents out there. And uh, I, I'm Brad from from the podcast. It's like, <laughs> oh, my God, I feel like an idiot. I felt like I should have dropped a poem, but I was unprepared. Oh, uh... You but, should have made it all rhyme. <laughs> should have done something. I, that might have been more offensive. <laughs> it, it probably would have been more offensive. I could not get out of there fast enough. I couldn't get out of there fast enough. Oh, and you had to go over there like three times too. Yeah. Yeah. The last time I begged uh, the lady in charge to not, because it's all the same people. They would come, they would go, they would get refreshments and they'd come back. Yeah. You know, it was the same crowd. They were there for that purpose. Yeah. And it's like, well, I'm going to tell them about, you know, waste management, <laughs> waste management. Think, think to waste management for sponsoring. But like, yeah. I don't think they need to hear my voice ever again. Yeah. Um. But it was it was uh, the, the poets were unbelievable and um, and 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 really inspiring. If you've never seen a poetry slam, go in with an open mind and, and go check it out. It's awesome. Um, and I hope that they, it continues. I hope some of the negative comments that are going to definitely come through do not discourage the people at Martin Arts from having them back because it was really great. Uh, I do want to give a shout out to Martin Arts for putting that whole thing on and what they do in the community. Uh, Avid Productions, Kyle from Avid uh, doing all the sound and the stage and everything. It sounded great. It was awesome. Man. It sounded great. The guys were so great, so patient with everybody and uh, really, really helpful. It was it made it so easy. Yeah. So uh, shout out to Kyle at Avid and all the all the guys that were working with him. Uh, and ladies, Chaz was over there at the small stage killing it. Um, of course, all the sponsors, waste management. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, us, Jams yeah. and Cocktails, um, all the vendors and, and especially all the volunteers. They really killed the game out there. So uh, all in all, a great year. Uh, we were invited back for next year, nice. which was really nice. And uh, next year is the centennial of Stewart or Martin County or something. So they're going to put together something big. So that ought to be exciting. So anyway, that was our recap for Arts Fest. Um, uh, every, anybody that came out and saw us and all of our new subscribers that uh, that subscribe, if you happen to be watching, thank you so much for stopping yeah. by and and uh, taking some stuff, getting laid. You know, that's what it's all about. <laughs> taking stuff and getting laid. Yeah. So um, I guess we'll dive right into our um, right into the reason we're here. Valentine's Day. So. You know, sometimes we think of Valentine's Day as a, kind of a hallmark holiday, which it is. It is. But there's some history. There's some history to uh, to all of that. And I'm going to tell you all about it. So it's this big day of love that we celebrate every February, February, February 14th. Well, it's got some pretty ancient, ancient roots. Uh, it all started way back in the Roman times. Not Times New Roman. That's a that's a font. Uh, but back in Roman times, uh, with this little festival called Lupercalia. Spell check. Uh, it was kind of a wild, uh, think matchmaking lotteries, animal sacrifices, and slapping women with goat hides to boost fertility. Yeah, not exactly chocolates and roses, Kelly. <laughs> uh, as the story goes... Uh, along comes this dude named Valentine. Perhaps Valentine lost to history. Mm -hmm. But he was a priest during the third century in Rome. And Emperor, Emperor Claudius II uh, was all about war and thought that single men made better soldiers. So he nixed marriages for young dudes. And Valentine wasn't having any of it. So he saw love as something worth fighting for. Uh, so he started performing marriages in secret. Pretty bold, right? didn't go so well for him. Uh, eventually, he got caught and he was executed. Uh, but he left a mark, becoming a martyr for love. How lovely. By the Middle Ages, he was one of the most popular saints in England and France. And February 14th, got pegged hmm, as Valentine's <laughs> Day. And it was all about expressing love and admiration. So fast forward to today, of course, uh, and it's a huge deal. People buy cards, chocolates, flowers, all sorts of gifts to show their love. Uh, it's not just for couples either. Friends and family get in on it, too. It's basically turned into this big celebration of love in all forms. 
So yeah, that's the gist of Valentine's Day. Started out as a wild Roman festival, got a dash of rebel love, courtesy of St. Valentine, and evolved into the day of love that we know now. So pretty, pretty cool for a uh, day filled with heart-shaped everything, including candy boxes, as Ellie has over there. Heart-shaped candy. Meow. With cats. I saw that, and I, and I had to get it for you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, got to have some... Gotta have some cat swag. Uh, anyway, you guys, uh, we're gonna take a quick musical break. I can't. But I've, I've already smashed through my beer. When when there's not a lot of voices going, <laughs> drink drink a lot of beer. So we're gonna fill that up, and then uh, we'll be back with name that tune. So get your thinking caps on. This is JNC. We'll be right back. <laughs> been a lot of places, I've seen a lot of faces, but not add up with the beauty that I place with your smile, I love your style, so please don't go home, girl, just stay for a little while longer, I wish that I could be stronger, I'm not good with expression, so I wrote you this song, girl, please understand you make me weak in the knees, and it's loving that you spread and plaguing me like disease, but I kinda like it, I'm kinda addicted, I look into your eyes, I get high and uplifted, uh, I swear you gifted, so where did you get this, wonderful ability to help me forget this, stress up a Life has got me where that I look forward to your company Cause you and me together but like Bonnie and Clyde I feel alright You're a blessing in my life so far out and out of sight well, I just wanna take the time to let you know that I love you girl And I don't know where I'd be it without you in my world And you are the one day and I don't want to let you go, so baby, please, stay by my side. So please, girl, won't you take my hand, let's you and me escape to a far away land. So you understand, so full of compassion, though I wear my heart on my sleeve like it was going out of fashion. Yeah, well, you've looked past it, accepted, and it shows. I hope you stick around because I like it when you're close. Not only money to show how much I like you, but I wish it wasn't broke, because sometimes I'd really like to take you out. Yeah, I want to dine you. I don't want to leave because it took so long to find you. Finally, a girl with some class. I might be right beside you, but I got your back. And I just want to take the time to let you know that I love you, girl. And I don't know where I'd be without you in my world. And you are the one thing, and I don't want to let you go. So baby, please, stay by my side. All right. That was Chris Springer. He released that quite a while ago. I just found it. I was looking for any lovey-dovey song that I could find, and that one is literally titled I Love You. <laughs> so here you go. Here we have it. It's like, that's the one. All right, you guys, we are back, and it's time to open your heart to some love songs here on Name That Dude. Open your heart, Ellie. What heart? Your cold, cold heart. <laughs> all right, you guys, we invite all of our live viewers to play along with us in the chats and comments. We're looking for the name of the song and the artist or band performing it. Uh, tonight's category is, <laughs> you might have guessed, ah, oh, love it, dove it. Let's play. <laughs> Are you ready, Ellie? As I'll ever be. All the pressure's on you. Do I do I automatically win by default? I think you automatically lose by default if you don't win. <laughs> so, however that works out. <laughs> All right, here we go. First clue, name that tune. Oh, love it, dove it. The I don't want to jinx it by saying what I'm about to say, but these are super easy. <laughs> you say that every time. They're super easy, I promise. All right, here here we go. First <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> First clue, here we go. And I... See? 
All right, here here it is again. And I, it's beautiful. Ellie is writing feverishly. I'm not sure, but I imagine that Jay Bird got this one. <laughs> <laughs> Ready? And maybe Scott Benj if he's tuning in and not at rehearsal with his band. All right, Ellie, let's see what it is. Yes, it is I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston, <laughs> Dolly Parton, you name it. We'll always love you. Ooh. This eraser doesn't. Well, it, I guess you can't see on the camera, but the red's smearing. Oh, uh, yeah. The red, it's, it's pretty intense. All right, ready for the next clue? <laughs> Here we go. Wise say. Here's that clue one more time. Wise say. Ellie is writing. She she's pretty confident. Give everybody a second out there to put their guesses in the comments. Because I love all of you, and that's why I'm taking it so easy on you out there today. All right, Ellie. Let's see what you got. Can't help falling in love by Elvis himself. That's right. <laughs> falling in love with... Not bad. All right. So far, two for two. Yeah. Not bad. All right, next clue. All lovey-dovey. My love has come along. <laughs> you look stumped. Here it is again. My love has come along. The artist might trip some of you up out there, but, you know, it's only for the extra point. I can't remember the name of the song. Oh, come on. Let me get it one more time. All right, one more time. My love has come along. The, t the title of the song is right before that, I got it. that yeah. bit. All right, what do you got? At last, Etta James. That's correct. Correct the mundo. At last. It's a classic. Did you ever watch uh, Cadillac Records where uh, it was Beyonce playing Etta James? You know, I, ha I haven't. I. Uh, it's actually really good. That seems like something I need to watch. I get that confused with um, what's the one with Jennifer Husband Dream Girls. Oh yeah, yeah. And I, I, I get those that two was a films. Good one too. I get those two films confused. Um, it was good. Uh, yeah. Beyonce played Etta James. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Didn't she sing that song at the the Obama inauguration? I don't know. I yeah. know that she sang all the songs in the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. She's. It was Super a good talented. movie. I loved her, her commercial in the uh, Super Bowl, breaking the internet. Do you remember that one? No. I'll no, we'll talk about that in the Jordy Files. Okay. All right. Next, next clue and name that to you. And here we go. It's a little bit funny. This feeling. Here it is one more time. It's a little bit funny. This feeling. Again, I can't remember the name of the song. It's you'll hate yourself. I know you'll hate yourself when you hear the answer. One more time. <laughs> okay. There it is. Just because we don't care about anything here. It's a little bit funny. This feeling. Oh man, somebody's bebopping out there. Feel the car bass. 
I I don't know. No idea? No. Well, you got you guys out there. I know there's probably some answers coming through. Jaybird, good job. (laughs) Nailed it, I'm sure. All right, nothing? Nothing on the board. I got the artist, but I don't remember Elton John is good. Um, It is your song. Okay. This is your song. And maybe... I knew it was you something. Yeah. Your song. All right. This one, this is the toughest. This is the toughest one in the bunch. Um, but I love this song. Here, uh, here's the final clue. Name that tune. All of it, dove it. L is for the way you look at me. Here's again. L is for the way you look at me. Nothing? I know the song, but I don't know who it's by or what it's called. I feel like it's been done by a million people. Yeah. This is by one particular person, though. All right, we'll give him a second out there. Spelling counts on this one, particularly. All right, you give up, Ellie? Yeah. It is L O V E by Nat King Cole. Love. Was made for me and you. And you. Nice. You did pretty good. I did. Definitely got like an 80%, right? A 75? Yeah. Passing. Um, I don't know. Yeah. Passing grade. Nice. Good job, everybody out there. Not too shabby. Well, I guess, um, <laughs> I guess we should just dive right into this. Um, it's time to deliver the. Most factually accurate entertainment news on the moon. And since Jordy is likely currently stuffing her face with cotton candy, uh, I'll do the honors. This is the Jordy Files. All right. Yes. Oh, good. I can't believe it actually popped up on the right camera here. Uh, welcome to the Jordy Files. Um, uh, Jordy is currently on a roller coaster with me, most likely, unless I've gotten lost in the in the midway. Um, She's so- going to tie a little balloon to your to your pants so she can find you in the crowd. <laughs> That's so funny. I can't. You're an asshole. Where's your bingo card? Oh, man. So you got me tonight here in the Jordy Files. Uh, tonight in the files, the brink of disaster turns into a tale of grace. Legends vie for a coveted throne. A halftime show redefines the word spectacle. A pop icon plots her grand escape and forgiveness shines brighter than the spotlight. But here are some celebrity birthdays to start. Let's get in there. Uh, First up, the Colombian sensation known for her electrifying blend of reggaeton and Latin pop. Uh, Carol G celebrates her 33rd birthday today with chart-topping hits like Tusa in Bichota. Carol G continues to redefine the music scene. Next up on the list, do you know her, Ellie? I do not. Yeah, the, the name was familiar to me, but I didn't know her music. Didn't she get nominated on the Grammys? For sure. For sure. It doesn't say here, but I think she did. 33. Dub strips. Good for her. <laughs> Happy birthday. Uh, Freddie Highmore, English actor. Uh, Freddie Highmore, uh, belo- uh, known for his beloved roles in Bates Motel and The Good Doctor. Um, and uh, August Rush. You remember August Rush? Oh, yeah. I thought that was a great flick. I it really was. enjoyed that one. But he was in that, too. Um, he's 32 years old today. So his exceptional portrayal of complex characters have captivated audiences worldwide. I think he was in Finding Neverland, too, with Johnny Depp. Hmm. Yeah, man, he's been at it a long time. 32, still a baby. (laughs) Good for him. Next up on the list here, um, a lesser-known Holland, 
But Harry Holland is turning 25 today. Uh, he's known for his budding acting career and being the younger brother, of course, of Spider-Man actor Tom Holland. And his promising journey in the film industry is one to watch. So, uh, Harry Holland. His parents. Yes. Harry. Uh, next up on our list of celebrities having birthdays is uh, <laughs> Phil Lewis, best known for his role as Mr. Mosby in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody. Uh, he hits the 56-year milestone today. His comedic brilliance has left an indelible mark on television comedy. So happy birthday there, Mr. Lewis. Uh, turning 46 years old today, fierce and formidable actress Denai Guerrera celebrated uh, for her role as Okayoi in the Black Panther. I, I definitely botched that. Doing <laughs> Jordan justice here. Uh, beyond acting, uh, Denai's work as a playwright and activist continues to inspire. 46 years old. Happy birthday. And rounding out our celebrity birthdays here today is uh, Simon Pegg turning 54 years old today. English actor, writer, and geek icon. He's renowned for his roles in Shaun of the Dead and Star Trek. Uh, Pegg's humor and creativity have made him a beloved figure in film and television. Uh, I do love his work. I enjoy him. I enjoy his work. I enjoy him. I don't know. 54 years old. That's crazy. That is crazy. But all right, let's uh, get into our stories here. Ooh, did you hear that? that? That pop? That was a good one. I think I heard it in your microphone. <laughs> Wild. We're going to kick things off with a little drama from across the pond, starring none other than, you guessed it, T Swift. T Swift. So imagine Tokyo, city lights, the energy. And in the midst of it all, Taylor Swift atop a whimsical folklore cabin roof, <laughs> serenading thousands. Sounds magical, right? Well, it nearly turned into a heart stopping moment when. Taylor, in true dramatic flair, almost lost her footing, descending from her cabin perch. But fear not, Swifties. Our queen turned the near miss into a memorable joke, assuring everybody that despite her flashy, her life flashing before her eyes, she's perfectly fine. I'll talk about a performance to remember. I hope somebody caught that on film. <laughs> oh, I'm sure. I want to see it. Uh, moving on from pop royalty to rock legends, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has rolled out the red carpet for its latest batch of nominees. And guess who's finally getting a nod, Ellie? Who? The goddess of pop herself. Mariah Carey? I mean, yes, it appears that she's on there, but we're talking about Cher. No. Oh. We're talking about Cher, that's right. After expressing her... um. How do we say displeasure at being overlooked? Uh, she's officially in the running. Uh, she's in stellar company with first timers like the Prince of Darkness, Ozzy Osbourne, and the elusive Chanteuse Mariah Carey, as mentioned by Ellie. This year's ceremony in Cleveland is shaping up to be an epic showdown of musical titans. So we'll share get her due. I guess you'll just have to stay tuned, won't you? All right. Now we got to talk about Super Bowl. Let's talk about the performance that had everybody's jaws on the floor. And I know what you're thinking out there, Philip. As I read your Facebook post, <laughs> Philip said, worst halftime show ever. And I'm not going to say it was the best halftime show ever. However, there are some people coming out of the woodwork saying that it was. Uh, it wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. It wasn't the best. But it wasn't the worst. It certainly wasn't the worst. Um, But I... I I'll tell you what it was to my generation. It was it was how Gen X felt when Tom Petty took the stage out there and hit all those songs. It's how Gen X felt when Prince took the stage and electrified with all of his mega hits. I'm not saying that Usher is Prince or even Tom Petty, um, but the songs that he put out there, these are songs that like came out when I was in my early teens. Yeah. And like, they just mean everything. They were the biggest hits of our time. That's uh, what was playing when you were uh, at 
fucking thunder skate right. on your roller skates. Right. <laughs> you know, like it, it's the songs that were on the radio when I had my first my driver's license for the first yeah. month. You know, like Usher was killing it during that time. Mm. All these songs and um, to like hear them and like to see all the different characters like Jermaine Dupri, uh, Alicia Keys coming out there, even though she uh, I don't think she warmed up. Yeah, I don't think she warmed up. Maybe if she would have warmed up. Um, anyway, we won't go into all that. But she looked great. <laughs> yeah. um, and, you know, the, in the song, you know, My Boo, come on, man. That's the song we we set out to every girl. <laughs> and we were like, My Boo. Um, uh, and, and you had Lil John and Ludacris yeah, on the same that stage. That was cool. Come on. You know, and, and I will say, like, I feel like it was a little extra, like, you know, there were so many people. Yeah. So many people, so much going on. The roller skate thing was cool, but I feel like it was like gratuitous. Um, and all the costume changes, I was like, this is it was kind of like a kaleidoscope. Yeah. But the songs, come on. And it sounded great. I feel like sometimes the the halftime shows, like the sound is all fucked up. Yeah. But it sounded great. And I enjoyed that that even though like the performances weren't stellar, it, they were really singing. Yeah. You know, you could tell. Yeah. Um, they were actually performing the song. So like, I'll give credit where it's due. Uh, the nostalgia factor for a certain generation was through the roof. Um, it was better than the one with Eminem and, and everyone else. <laughs> Who was it that was upside down? That was 50 Cent. 50 Cent. <laughs> yeah. Look like he was suffocating. <laughs> I mean, listen. Because that was a nostalgic, <laughs> you know. It was, and I enjoyed that one too. But yeah, it was a little weird. Yeah, it was weird. I'd take roller skates over that. Yeah. Like, my man, they hung him upside down. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to ever be upside down for any reason. Even though currently, right now, I'm probably upside down. <laughs> You're, you're throwing up in a trash <laughs> I'm can. Throwing up in a trash can right now. After the Gravitron. <laughs> yeah, all my rib tips I've just eaten, all going out. What a waste. Um, so let me just read the story here because we got off on a tangent. <laughs> um, the man proved, and I agree with this, why he's an R&B legend, bringing not just his A game, but the entire alphabet of cool to the stage, uh, from high energy dance numbers to soulful serenades and Yes, a t-shirt tearing moment and had the crowd roaring. And let's not forget the star-studded appearances like, as mentioned, Alicia Keys, Lil John Ludacris making a union, a reunion uh, you didn't know that you needed. I was blown away. When I saw that they were both there, I was like, yes. Yeah. Screaming. Uh, Usher on skates. You know how I feel about that. <laughs> um, I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Not the best, not the worst. I thought it was great, though. I really enjoyed it. And but you know who we thought and most people thought was CeeLo Green? Yeah, Jermaine Dupree. It, it was Will I Am. No, Will I Am was there also. Oh. But that wasn't Will I Am. Oh, so they were both on stage? Yes. They so, look identical. <laughs> Will I Am's face was completely covered by a robot. Oh. Mask, yeah. But he was there. Uh, yeah. Okay, had, so it like was both on. of them. He, okay. kind of, he kind of looked like... Um, um, get lucky guys. What's the name? Oh, Daft uh, Punk. Yeah, he kind of looked like Daft Punk. Okay, but yeah, yeah. Everybody's, uh, you know, I was like, oh, CeeLo Green. We lost so much weight. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry, CeeLo. I heard that Gnarls Barkley's coming out with new music. That would be dope. That would be cool. All right. Well, on the flip side of all that, uh, <laughs> Katy Perry. She dropped a bit of a bombshell on Jimmy Kimmel Live. Our beloved pop sensation is bidding farewell to American Idol, uh, citing a yearning to reconnect with her music roots. Uh, it seems Good that Katie, right? Seems that she's planning a spectacular reunion or a return to the stage, rather, with new tunes and possibly a tour on the horizon. As she puts it, she's ready to feel the pulse of her own beat. So, Idol fans, enjoy her while you can, because Katy Perry is about to embark on an exciting new chapter. She's been doing her Vegas residency as well, too. So Yeah. Um, but, yeah, new stuff from Katy Perry possibly cool. coming. 
And lastly, I can't believe that we talked about this like almost a month ago. Um, but uh, L. King back in the news. Oh, yeah. Um, this time it's Dolly Parton uh, coming out and finally addressing uh, everything that went down. And a display of grace that only Dolly Parton can pull off. She's extended her forgiveness to L. King for a less than perfect tribute at the Grand Ole Opry last month. Uh, despite forgetting the lyrics to Dolly's song. Uh, in a moment made more memorable by King's admission of being hammered. In a more colorful way, uh, Dolly responded with nothing but kindness, proving once again why she's not just a country music icon, but she's a living lesson in compassion and understanding. So in Dolly's world, it's all about love and forgiveness. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, like, when we discussed it, uh, I had said that Dolly, like... Was going to be just like, eh, it's whatever. Like, uh, you, you, you get drunk. It happens. Yeah, basically, <laughs> she was like, yep, she had a little too much to drink, yeah. haven't we all? You yeah. Know? And it's, um, yeah, God, she's the best. She is. She's the best. And there Aunt you have Dolly. it. Aunt Dolly. Yeah, Aunt Dolly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you have it. A uh, whirlwind of uh, tour of the highs and lows in the music world from Tokyo to Cleveland, Vegas to Nashville. We've covered a lot of ground this afternoon, evening. What where, where time is it? Where are we? <laughs> what country am I in? Afternoon uh, somewhere. Somewhere. Five o'clock somewhere. Mm-hmm. It'll be five o'clock in five minutes. Uh, remember, whether it's a near fall from a cabin or a misremembered lyric, it's all about how you recover and the grace you show in doing so. So this has been the Jordy Files. Good job, Jordy. Wherever you are. Whatever Gravitron you're on right now. I'm Holding back Brad's hair while he vomits. Oh, God, no. No, 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 no. What, what hair? <laughs> what, my beard hair? Just holding hold, your hat. Hold my beard hair back so I don't vomit in it. All right, you guys, we're going to take a quick break. Ellie's got her bad bitch Bible study right after this. You're listening to Jams and Cocktails. Don't go away. There's a little tune I wrote a long time ago called In a Love Song.
challenge. <laughs> that was nice. That was nice. You want a little behind the scenes uh, look into that recording session? Yeah. So that particular song, um, when I it took like three takes because I kept fucking it up, <laughs> right? So, uh, um, as you do, as I as I do, and uh, and I there's the footage is around somewhere. I completely lost my shit. I had a complete meltdown because I was so f- like you know it's kind of like you know getting down to the wire. Needed this to be done so I could edit it and have it ready. And uh, completely lost my, had a meltdown on camera. And uh, there's a bunch of them. And I probably have to put it all together. I even had a, like, even recently when I was making uh, making uh, Jambalaya, I had a meltdown on camera. <laughs> I don't even know what it was for. Like, <laughs> I don't even know why. Do you remember, uh, are you a fan of Bo Burnham? Bo Burnham. What's uh what what what's some of the stuff that he does? He's he's had a couple of Netflix specials, but it's just weird off the wall stuff. But it's like it's very interesting. It's just the guy that came out with that the the, the piano bit during a uh, COVID. Yes. Yeah. But he did he did um a Netflix special during COVID called Inside, and it was really good. Um. But then he also released like behind the scenes stuff and you see him just like setting up all his weird cameras because like all the lighting and stuff he does. And it's really like if you are a fan of like behind the scenes production of shows like that, like you you understand it and respect it. But he put out like behind the scenes stuff where he's literally losing his shit and throwing cameras and just like like what the fuck kind of thing and it reminded me so much of you and watching your process and the shit you do it was hilarious so let me get this right he he set up cameras to watch him set up cameras well no it was the cameras that were set up already and you just see him like where he it was a camera that was supposed to be set up for filming or whatever and like he'll sit down and like lights fall or something he's like like loses his shit that's you funny. have to watch it because I think you would really appreciate it. Like you, you would get a kick out of it. You don't have to watch the the like actual special to appreciate it. Like you can watch the behind the scenes shit. Like he's playing a song and like keeps fucking it up at the same part. Like yeah, <laughs> bro, I, I I completely relate. Yeah, you know, and it, and it's so ridiculous because you immediately compose yourself and you're like, okay, but like you know, but you have to have those moments where you just get it out. And then you're like, okay, now I can focus again. <laughs> Unless you're a creative, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I take that back. Even if you're not a creative, when you get into the zone, when you get into the zone, you're doing something um, and, like, it gets derailed by even the smallest thing. You know, but patience is a virtue. It truly yeah. is. And 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 patience is learned uh, and, and, and rehearsed and, and uh, exercised. But when you're in, in it and you're just trying to get things done, especially when you have a crunch time, when you're just trying to get things done and like nothing is going right and it happens all the time. And it's always when you're in a pinch mm-hmm. and uh, man, yeah, I have to watch that because you have to, I'll, I'll find it. I'll uh, send you a link. But yeah, like it was funny because like on the way to Arts Fest the first day I was running a little behind and I was just trying to get to Dunkin' Donuts to get like a bagel and a coffee, right? And I was telling Jordan this too, because I was like, it reminded me of you so much. And I was like, we're definitely related. Because I was in the car and of course, like Arts Fest has like the main road blocked off. Well, that's the way my GPS was taking me. So I had to find a side road and stuff. And like in downtown Stewart, there's like one way roads and there's no really nowhere to U-turn most of the time. And I was losing my shit. And I was in the car just going off. I was like, these fucking roads and one way road bullshit. This fucking town. I was like, I just want my coffee and my fucking bagel. And then by the time I like turned around and like was on my way, I was like, okay, like I'm good now. (laughs) But it was like five minutes straight of just screaming and nothing in particular. (laughs) Bro. And and, and the worst part about this, you guys, is that Ellie was not 
late by any stretch of the imagination. Like we 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 I I neglected to tell her that we were starting an hour later than normal. So no no no, this was Saturday. Oh okay yeah. But you showed up on plenty of time. Yeah, it was like nine fifteen nine twenty. <laughs> but yeah, bro, like <laughs> I, I, I get it. I get it, man. It, it it's it's so far, especially when it's you, like. You know, like I'm more patient with somebody else inconveniencing me. Oh, yeah. Than when I inconvenience myself because it's like, I know better. I'm an (laughs) asshole. (laughs) But that's like, it's healthy to have those moments where like you have to just like rage for a minute, maybe two minutes, and then you're fine. Then you can focus again. You just got to get that shit out. (laughs) Mm -mm -mm. Well, um, I don't know if this works into your bad bitch Bible study or not, but uh, uh, what do you say? You have one prepared? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Good, good. All right, you guys. Well, um, it's time for Ellie's bad bitch Bible study. Les, where's my button for that? Let's do it. Happy Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> oh. And Valentine's Day is like, it can be a great day for some people. It can be a not so great day for some people. Um, we may not all be holding hands with the love of our lives on top of a of a Ferris wheel. Brad, Jordan. We're doing right at this very moment. <laughs> um, you know, and I've spent plenty of Valentine's Days alone at the house with the kitty cats. Um, and that's okay. Those can be wonderful Valentine's days as well, because Valentine's day is not just about romantic love. It's about just love in general. Um, I remember in like elementary school, we would give out Valentine's day cards to everyone. Right. And I think that's special because everyone should feel special on those days. So if you don't have a significant other, you know, give Valentine's Day cards to your friends, to your family, to your pets, to yourself, to a random stranger on the street. You know, uh, I'm sure anyone would love if someone walked up to me and just was like, happy Valentine's Day and just gave me a Valentine's Day card. That would make my fucking week. Like, you don't know what kind of small effect can become a big effect to someone, you know, maybe small for you, but it could mean the world to someone that you don't even know. So if you're down on this day and you're focusing on like, oh, I don't I don't have a boyfriend or girlfriend or whatever, like it, there's plenty of love to go around on this day. And if you don't have love around you, create it. Be the love that that is spreading it around to everyone else around you because that's that's the the big idea behind today. Is just to to spread love and to enjoy being here where you can experience love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I like that. <laughs> nice. Thanks. I agree. Wholeheartedly. And treat yourself right too. If you're alone on Valentine's Day, there was one year that I got myself. I got balloons. I got flowers. I got chocolates i got myself a diamond ring and diamond earrings yeah, i treated you, you, myself you treated well yourself that day and it was it was what i needed at that time you know like and it, and it was great i had a great time um it was a very special day that i was able to spend with myself i remember one year just before uh, um meeting jordan i was kind of seeing this girl and uh I knew it was going nowhere, but I liked her and we were hanging out, but she was kind of a mess at the time. And uh, I was at Shindig and I was there with Steve and Jen and we were watching a band and they left. They, they were like, you know, well, we're leaving. And I was living with them at the time. Um, and I was like, no, this girl's coming to meet me and, uh, and you know, she'll just drive me home or whatever. P.S. guys, I didn't have a car. Like I was, just got off the cruise ship. You know, so uh, I was a bum, 
<laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so I waited for like two hours and never heard from this girl. Aww. And uh, yeah. And I was too embarrassed to call Steve and have him come and pick me up. So I walked like five miles home. Um, and I needed to walk anyway. I needed to like get my mind together and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was uh, that was a pretty lonely. It was on Valentine's Day. Oh, no. Yeah, it was it was pretty sad. I was a pretty sad guy, but but it's OK. It's OK. Um, but that that road led you to the beautiful, amazing Jordan, who is now your forever Valentine. Yes. Yes. It, Absolutely, without a doubt, hundred percent, hundred percent. Okay, well, um, I guess we should dive into our shameless plugs. Let's do it. Wow. Any shameless? Mm-hmm. Any shameless plugs, Ellie? Uh, yeah. Follow my Instagram for my daily tarot cards. Um, it is bad underscore bitch tarot on Instagram. Um, I do. I haven't had anybody that wants a tarot card reading yet. You know, I I think that we should we should do one on um uh, on one of our shows. We should just yeah, you know, like pick a random. You know, if somebody in the in, on the live stream wants to do it, pick a random one there and just go through the process. Maybe we'll have them call in. I don't know if that works for you, but. Uh, we'll do one, you know, yeah, and uh, and maybe that'll drum up some some other people wanting a reading done. Yeah, I would love to do it. Um, you know, if if you want a a quick like three card reading just to kind of see what I'm about, I will be happy to do that for you. Um, but I've been doing the card of the day, and that's been fun to do to kind of see what the card's gonna be. Obviously, I'm pulling the card, so they're very specific to me. <laughs> yeah. Um but that's kind of cool too. Like um I don't know. I've been having fun with it. That's really all that matters, but um I would love to be able to do do readings for other people as well. And I do other stuff. Like it's not just tarot card readings. If you're interested in any kind of witchy stuff, reach out to me. You can message me on uh on that Instagram. Nice. Nice. I'll put that in the forever um We'll put that link in the in the forever upload of this as well. Cool. Nice. That's it. That's it. All right. Um, I don't have a whole lot of uh plugs, but I will uh, give you the ones that I do have. Shout out, of course, to our sponsors and partners at Code Rum, the Sneaky Tiki in downtown Stewart, the Bug Juice Bug Repellent, Leak Busters Roofing, roofing and of course, uh, all of our Patreon patrons. We love you so much. Uh, check out our podcast partners at Drums and Rums, Riffs and Rhythms, the Al Beltran podcast. Had a really great um interview uh yesterday with a with a shaman mm. um it was very insightful it really reaffirmed a lot of my thoughts on spirituality and and what what this existence is without getting super deep but like what all of this is um you know he just kind of like explained it and i was like yeah i'm i'm clearly in the know somehow <laughs> i'm just not a shaman uh, anyway, um, yep, uh, five six one music and Ghost on the Ox. We love all those, all those shows. Uh, come out and see me performing live around town. Uh, you can find out where at bradbrock dot com. If you love what we do and you want to support the show, speaking of Patreon patrons, uh, subscribe to our Patreon page. Uh, it starts at five bucks a month and it uh, really helps offset uh, the cost of a lot of the stuff that we do. Um. And uh, that link is everywhere on our website, on every episode. Just look for the word Patreon, click on it. You'll see what it's all about. Uh, and it's super easy to do. And we, we thank uh, all of our Patreon patrons. Never did I think I'd be sitting here and knowing that there's there's people, you know, sending me bu- money every month to support the show. I think that's <laughs> very cool. Um, so we, we love you guys so much. Um, and if you want to be a, a big sponsor... Uh, and you want to have your picture framed just like Nia does over here. Um, you could become a beer keg sponsor, just like Nia Maltova from My Rum Diaries and Jay Jay Bird, who is uh, uh, last month's sponsor, sponsor, and uh, Mike Farrell, who is next month's sponsor. So, and I think we already have somebody 
for uh for april as well so hmm. we're moving on through the through the year i think that's great so if you want to be a, a beer sponsor as well uh you can just venmo me 100 dollars. it sounds like a lot but it's not it's not it's just 100 bucks um and that's what a keg costs so I'm literally taking no profit of it yeah it goes to putting a keg in the cooler uh so in addition to a uh, picture you'll get a shout out from us on the show all month long whatever your month happens to be uh, plus, you'll uh, get a little care package. Nia's is going in the mail this week. Um, so, yeah. Uh, thank you. That's so awesome. <laughs> and that's it. That's the shameless plug. All right. All right. Well, as we wind the show down here, uh, it's time for Brad's final thought. And uh, taking in all that we've talked about, Ellie's bad bitch Bible study um uh here here's my thoughts on all of that so valentine's day is here again i know that it can feel like this day is just for couples but let's take a step back and think about what this day really represents it's not just about romance and all the mushy stuff it's about love to ellie's point and love well it's a big beautiful thing that goes way beyond just romantic relationships so think about it you've got friends who have been there for you through thick and thin family members who've got your back no matter what and maybe even a pet who thinks you're the best thing since sliced bread (laughs) that's love isn't it why not use valentine's day as an excuse to celebrate all of that let's ditch the idea that you need to be in a relationship to enjoy valentine's day Now, this day is a golden opportunity to reach out and show a little appreciation for people in your life who matter. Send a message to your friend you haven't talked to in a while. Give your parents a call just to say you love them. Buy your pet a new toy. It's about making people feel valued and loved. And who doesn't need a bit of that from time to time or all the time? And you know what? Celebrating love in all its forms, including self-love, is so important. So treat yourself to something nice. doesn't have to be diamonds and chocolates. (laughs) But, you know, take yourself out on a date. Buy that thing you've been eyeing for months. It's a day about love, and that includes loving yourself. Selves. So this Valentine's Day, let's flip the script. Let's make it about love in the broadest sense. Celebrate the people around you and don't forget to celebrate yourself. You don't need to be in a relationship to have a place in the day of love. You just need to be you. And that's more than enough. So let's spread some love, folks. It's what the world needs more of these days. And it starts with us. Happy Valentine's Day to all of you and every kind of love you cherish. Cheers. I'll give myself a round of applause. Sounds like you uh, stole from the bad bitch Bible, saying. It sounds like (laughs) you stole from my final thoughts. What the hell did that tarot card say? (laughs) Anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed our lovely show. (laughs) Give it up once again for L.A. Holding down the fort with me tonight. We will be be back live next week for uh, Jordan's birthday episode. Oh, my God. It's here again. uh, How many birthdays is she going to have? I I hope (laughs) hundreds, to be honest with you. Uh, I, I have no idea how I'm going to top the carnival episode. Oh, God. Um, next week? Next week. Next week. Uh, yeah. Jeez. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> Thankfully, I think I have a little bit of time to figure it out. I think yeah, I have like you a, have a week. I think I have Monday and Tuesday off the next week. So uh, I have a couple of days in a row to, to try to pan <laughs> that out. How does how is. Well, it's not at her actual birthday, but it's it's. We'll be out of town for her actual birthday. Mm. Um, we're going to see Mark Broussard in Charleston. So oh. it'll be a good time. Yeah. So we're we're moving it up. So, yeah, it's a little closer than a year. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, I hope I'm currently throwing up on the Gravitron ride right now as we speak. 
uh, until next time, you guys, take care of yourselves and each other out there. Uh, broadcasting live from the legendary JNC Lounge. I'm Brad Brock. This is LA Brock. We love you. Good night.